Hello, and welcome to our first video in our series on environmental economics. In this video, we will discuss how to derive the supply and demand curves and how we can use them to find competitive equilibrium. Before we begin, we need to introduce and define what marginal benefit is. Marginal benefit is the amount of benefit gained from consuming one more unit of the good. Economists often try to figure out what happens when something changes by one unit. This is important because it allows you to consider changes in the additional benefit you get from each unit so that you can optimize your benefit. They call this thinking at the margin. To illustrate this concept, we'll use marginal benefit to determine how many slices of pizza we should eat to maximize our benefit. Another quick note on terminology. In economics, we use the word benefit to quantify the amount of enjoyment or usefulness we get from something. We will compare the number of slices of pizza that we eat to how much additional or marginal benefit that we get from each slice. For the first slice that we eat, we get 8 units of benefit. For the second slice, we get 7. For the third, 6. And so on. By the time we get to the A slice, we only get one more unit of benefit for eating it. By this point, we are feeling really full. We could probably eat one more slice, but we wouldn't get any enjoyment from it. If we ate a 10 slice, we'd probably make ourselves sick, and thus eating it would provide us with negative marginal benefit. Up until this point, we haven't considered the cost to the consumer or producer for each slice of pizza. Similar to marginal benefit, marginal cost is the additional cost of producing one more unit of a good or service. Continuing with our example of pizza slices, the marginal costs of producing a slice of pizza include the cost of things such as tomato sauce, flour, cheese, and other ingredients for the pizza, the cost of capital equipment like rolling pins, ovens, and pizza pans, and the cost of labor, including paying the chefs, cooks, delivery persons, and managers. This time, we will compare the number of slices of pizza made to how much additional or marginal cost it takes to make each slice. For every slice of pizza made, the marginal cost increases by $1. This is because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Basically, this law says that as you increase one factor of production, such as the number of workers you have, their average productivity decreases. The pizza shop owners can't immediately buy more ovens to make more pizza, or they may need to move to a larger building before doing so. It takes time to hire and train new employees, so no new employees may be less productive, or older employees may need to be paid overtime to work more. This is a simplified but generally accurate model. We can compare marginal benefit to marginal cost to find market equilibrium. First, we'll take a minute to define and explain supply and demand. Our demand curve is the relationship between price and quantity demanded, where marginal benefit is equal to price for a given quantity demanded. Be careful of our use of terms here, because there is a difference between demand and quantity demand. Quantity demanded is the amount of a good or service that consumers want to buy at a given price whereas demand represents the relationship that describes different quantities demanded at all prices, if everything else remains the same. A consumer is willing to buy if price is less than or equal to marginal benefit, because they get surplus benefit they don't have to pay for. We will discuss this in more detail in our next video. This is also known as willingness to pay. Our supply curve is the relationship between price and quantity supplied, where marginal cost is equal to price for a given quantity supplied. A producer is willing to sell if price is greater than or equal to marginal cost, and producers also get a surplus. Once again, be aware of the difference between supply and quantity supply. 